And so we still say honour to Mr Chamberlain through all the doubts and aspersions of these latter days. The man who stands firm for peace deserves the trust and support of his countrymen. European peace is what I am aiming at and I hope that this journey may open the way to get it. When Mr Chamberlain left on his journey to Gottesburg, he flew in the face of criticism that he was truckling to Hitler. That is one of those charges which there is no opportunity of answering until the full sequel is known. We do know, however, that the Germans themselves have acquired a healthy respect for our Prime Minister. Hitler, of course, is the idol of his country. He it is who has restored Germany's power and pride. But in millions of German hearts, Mr Chamberlain represents the man who wants to preserve peace. And not all the propaganda in the world can disguise that fact. When he lands at Cologne, he is received as a friend by the German people. Hitler, we have seen, has preceded him to Gottesburg. Now Mr Chamberlain travels the modern motor road through lovely Rhineland, the same little Rhenish town. Herr von Ribbentrop conducts him to the Petersburg Hotel, where he is to stay, and presently he joins Herr Hitler on the other side of the river at the Dresden. For what happened in their three hours conversation, we have to await Mr Chamberlain's account to Parliament. But we have the Prime Minister's statement that there was not a complete breakdown. This friendly but regretful farewell is made a day later when the course of events elsewhere seemed to frustrate further negotiations.